to Last Day's Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. Well, today is a very special day because today in the studio is Mel Bond. Hi, Mel, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Gene. Uh, I want the people to really know, I just know a little bit of your story, but let's kind of dive back and let's start at the beginning of how you came to be what you are today. Well, I was born November 6, 1950, born again on a Tuesday, June the 17th, 1958. Right. Filled with Holy Ghost, spoken tongues the same day. Uh, got married uh, at the age of 18. My wife was 17, June the, the 20th, 1970. Right. And um, I had already been preaching and teaching, as I told you earlier, preached my first message at the age of seven, had a horrible experience with a, a pastor, and it right. caused me to really get away from God in a horrible way. Right. But at the age of 17, um, God proved himself to me a very supernatural way, and I started teaching and preaching the Word of God again. So after my wife and I got married, that um, we con I continued into the ministry, preaching wherever I could and that sort of thing. And uh, we pastored our first church in uh, 1972 and been pastoring and doing crusades ever since. So I, I'm curious if you can talk about it. What happened at 17? You said God really made an impression on you in a very real way to turn you back. Well, actually, I hate to say it, but from the experience that I had, it caused me to really doubt that there was a God because it was a very successful pastor. And... The, the way he treated me at the age of seven, I thought, how in the world could um, somebody that's a pastor treat a, a little boy this way? And so uh, I really got involved in some motorcycle gangs and right. just a horrible lifestyle. And so I really, I joined the Marine Corps for one reason, to die, because I was miserable. Wow. And so... Uh, the Marines, um, I joined when I was um, 16, but they wouldn't let me in until I was 17. And to make a long story short, they wouldn't gonna let me, my birthday was in November, and they was, and I, I said, but I, you gotta send me to Vietnam, that was the deal. Right. They said, oh yeah, there's no problem. But, um, so to make a long story short, the Marines wouldn't take me until January. And so after about uh, a couple of weeks, then I, I thought, I'm gonna ask the Army if they'd get me over there sooner. They said, we'll get you the day after you turn 17. Mm. So I joined the Army, and they didn't send me to Vietnam. But they did, they sent me to Korea. And so I was on guard duty, and I was about two o'clock in the morning. And I, I you know, I was raised in Sunday school, so I knew some basics and stuff. I still had a hard time believing there was God, and I remember just crying because I was miserable. And I just said, um, God, if, if you are real, just prove yourself to me and, and I'll live for you my, with, with my whole heart. And I started walking, it was a dark at night, two o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, I heard something over, this, over my head about eight to 10 feet. And I looked up and it was a white dove that was just absolutely glistening with God's glory and immediately I knew that was the Holy Spirit. And then I watched it disappear right in front of my eyes. God proved to me. He had to come to my level, I guess, because right. that's where I was at. I needed something more than just out of the Bible. I needed right. something that I could relate to. And, <laughs> and so at the age of 17, I memorized two, over 200 verses that year for the purpose, not just to keep the demons away, Right. They didn't like the Word of God. And so I found out, not only did it keep the demons away, but it cleaned me, cleaned wow. me up, and it caused me to be more spiritually minded. John 14, 21, Jesus said, He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me, he says, I will manifest myself to him. The word manifest in the Greek says, I'll show, I'll exhibit in person. And I think maybe because between those two things, that that's the reason why I've had a lot of visions. But that's what changed my life, and that's what mm. got me going, I guess. And so tell me about, now, you, as you started on, you started pastoring, and you, but you were doing uh, miracle crusades and stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what was going on there. Well, uh, it goes, 
I started doing miracle, uh, our, our, yeah, I call them healing and miracle crusades here in the United States. And uh, I'd borrow as much money as I could to try to do crusades and that. And we, we might have 150 or 200 people and spent all kinds of money. But after uh, I had Jesus to appear to me, and it was September the 28th, 1984, and that was on a Friday. And he explained to me how to release his anointing. From that time on, then I would do crusades, and then I went to India, and instead of having 150, we'd have 30 to 35,000 a night. Wow. And get as many as over there in those years, it was in, you know, like 1990, that um, 95% of the people, if not 98, were Muslims and Hindus. And we'd bring people up on the platform and, um, to show, to demonstrate the power of God. I'd preach to them the word of God, but God confirms mm. his word that's for right. science following. And then that's what, you know, we would have start out maybe five or 6,000 and it would just, they would keep growing because of the miracles. I'd bring the people on the platform and probably one of the best stories is, um, and there's a, he was a associate pastor of mine, Dan Fitzpatrick. And I, I told him, I says, here's what I want you to do tonight. Um, Go find the worst cases that you can find and bring them on the platform because those people, you can, you can preach to them all you want and they'll just put you in line with all everything the others. Else. Yeah. But the miracles separates everything. And so he brought a little girl up there. Well, she's about 16 years of age and her, her brother was a moon chubby. And in those years, the moon chubbies were the people that um, they uh, caused law and order. And I put banners up all over the city, big banners that would cross the, the streets. And I said, um, bring the blind, the deaf, the incurable, even bring the dead. And then over here I says, uh, and my God will heal him. And if he don't, please destroy me. I was kind of bold. My wow. wife didn't really like that, but <laughs> I'm a different kind of person that I, I lived all the way for the devil and I made a deal with God. I, I'm going to go all the way with Amen. you, God. Amen. I'm all, I'm in it all the way. Yeah, all in. I love and, it. And so they brought the girl up there, and I thought, my goodness, you know, uh, this girl was deformed, blind, deaf, couldn't walk, and mentally handicapped. And so when we prayed for her, now these poon jobbies, when you advertise that, and if it doesn't happen, they're just going to chop your head off. Right. Afterwards. And so if you want to go with me next time. Yeah, yeah, you. sure. Got, got a big line of people waiting to go with you on that, yeah, right? Yeah, because they're going to get you with me, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But uh, I, I guess uh, if God's word isn't true, right? then, you know, I, I'm not going to play any games. You know, I, I, I believe the whole word of God. I made a deal with God. I said, God, if there's something in here you don't want me to believe and act like it's true, get it out before I read it. Yeah, sure. So anyway, we prayed for and the little girl was healed, walked off the platform. Wow. And after that, then I give a simple altar call for the people, we explain to them briefly what it means to be born again. I says, how many out here would like to have a greater miracle than what you've seen with this girl? Mm. And um, so I said, raise your hand. And there was 30, 35,000 people. And I couldn't, I mean, you can't see everybody, but it looked like I couldn't see any hands down. Right. And then I explained to them, what that greater miracle was, that you can have abundant life, and uh, and it validates you're gonna for sure go to heaven when you die. And I so then I says, now how many wants that greater miracle? They all raise both hands. Oh yeah. And so we had 30 to 35,000 Hindus and Muslims accept Jesus Christ as Lord Thank because you. of the demonstration of the miracle working power of God. God wants to confirm his word with signs following. Yeah, I sure did. So that was, you know, I want to back up if I okay. can, yeah. because something I, I can hear people now saying, you know, ask him that, ask him, you said you were having like 100, 150 people until you learn how to release the anointing. Right. Explain. Uh, well, um, basically, when Jesus appeared to me, and that was um, on a Friday evening, September right. 28th, 1984, and he showed me, we were in a little still storefront building, that's where we were, and he showed me Sunday morning services. And there was a lady 
that she's a redheaded lady and he told me, and I'd never seen her before, and he says her name is Maureen Pruitt and she's gonna be here and this is what's wrong with her. And so I went ahead and preached and I was just waiting. I hurry up and get my message because I seen her there and I, I said, well, if this, this dream, I'm gonna prove, I wanna see if it was really a dream or a right. vision from God. So I called her out and she, it was exactly what Jesus said was wrong with her and she was instantly healed. But what Jesus told me, he says, Mel, he says, if you will learn to pray with your whole heart, he said, now this is the only thing he said. He says, if you will learn to pray with your whole heart, my anointing will always go into them and their needs will be met. Now that's what he said. However, when he said that, that it was just like volumes of information came into my mind and into my spirit. And I wrote a book about it. I've got a book titled Releasing God's Anointing. Okay. And, uh, and I talk about it, but, and I went briefly in the book. Truthfully, I could write that book and give 300 pages on it, but I like to, I want people to get right to the, yeah. the meat of it. And so they can walk away and there's not a lot of fluff. They just, and so anyway, that's what he said that, there was a whole lot of things that he that it means to pray with your whole heart, and and he was also teaching me mm. that the people has to receive with their whole right. heart when he said that, because you know you can pray for me, but if I if I won't receive it, I mean if you offered me a hundred dollar bill and I said no, Gene, yeah, no, it's not going to do me any good. You did your part. It's the same thing with God's anointing. A lot of people don't receive because they don't know how or whatever, or don't believe in it, or whatever. People has to, they have to receive with their whole That's heart. Good. And so That's good. there's a lot of teaching of what it means to pray with your whole heart, but it's it's so simple. I want to know, uh, first off, I want to, what's your connection with uh, Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland? There's, That's a that good happen? story too. Okay, when I started, like I told you, I've, I have really diligently been in the Word of God. Right. And so I'm in a denomination, and I'm preaching, it's a full gospel denomination. They believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit, right. speaking in tongues. And I had that, a very dramatic experience with that. And so I'm preaching and everything, but they're kind of blackballing me because they're saying, look, this stuff you're preaching, it's, it doesn't line up with our 16 fundamental truths. Right. And I told them, I said, there's more to the Bible than 16 fundamental truths. So anyway, I got discouraged and I thought, well, I'll go to their Bible college so that they can straighten me out. So I'm in Bible college and a guy by the name of David Casperson and David was uh, um, a drill sergeant in the army and he got out of the army and, uh, and he went to the same Bible college and he'd hear me preach and I mean, he would hear me pray in chapel and in the classroom. He says, uh, have, you, have you ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? And I says, no, I haven't. He's, oh man, you need to read his books. And I says, well, does he belong to this denomination? Because right. we're taught, you, you, you know, if they're not in our denomination. Yeah, you can't go outside. You, you yeah. can't, you know, they're all wrong. We're right. Right. And so he talked to me for probably a month trying to get me to read Brother Hagen's books or listen to one of his tapes. And this guy is a macho guy. He's a real man. Right. And he came to Bible college one day and in the hallway, got on his knees, handed a tape recorder and had a tape in there of Brother Hagen. And this man's crying. Tears are going down his face. And he says, Mel, he says, if you'll just listen to this tape from Brother Hagin, I promise I'll never mention him again. I said, okay, I'll do it. So I went home and I, uh, I'm an exercising person. Right. My dad was a professional boxer and so he taught us to, right. to exercise and so I still do that. And so I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna, I'll go home in this little old garage and I'll listen to him while I'm exercising. I turn the tape on. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. That's the place of authority, you know. If you know anything about it, right hand denotes the place of authority. Amen. Notice, and we're seated with him. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. After about five minutes, I thought, what? There's somebody else that believes like I do. Oh, wow. And yeah. so then I started buying his tapes, and it changed my life. And then... I found out that there's another guy, David Casperson says, well, if you like Kenneth Hagin, you're gonna like Kenneth Copeland. And I said, okay, then I bought some of his tapes and I said, 
Well, he sounds just like him. Faith is a very, very powerful spiritual force. Very powerful spiritual force. Spiritual forces are far more powerful than natural seen forces. Oh, yeah. Well, we think about nuclear power being so, so huge. But now, wait a minute. God spoke and created universes, solar systems, and it's still expanding at the speed of light. And the scripture says he did it by faith. Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland uh, put a strong foundation wow. in my life. I went from the renegade, dirty, renegade, poverty stricken person to where that God has blessed us to where that, uh, you know, we're not doing like Brother Copeland, but we got TV ministry and, yeah, God's you know, God's, you, you know, we're out of debt and we've, preached around the world, and I've seen oh, probably a million people saved. That would have never happened if I didn't, you know, thank right. God for the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. So that was a, a change in, in my life, a, a big change. So tell me, what did Jesus show you in 1983 with Ronnie Coyne? Yes. Okay. Ron Coyne was, he'd come to, I knew Ronald personally. Do you, did you ever heard of Ronald Coyne? Mm-hmm. Okay. He was the man that it's a long story. I know the, the details of it, but he, he was missing an eyeball. Physician, specialist, have given us documented statements that they believe it is phenomenal. They do not comment as to what source it comes from. Many of them do not say. Some have said it is the power of God. Others have said it's only a strange thing that cannot be explained. You'll have to arrive at an explanation from the demonstration itself. The only difference between what the Lord does for me sometimes and what he's doing for Ronnie, Ronnie, uh, he gets it one way and I get another. But it's the Lord either way, isn't that right? I think this is one of the most wonderful demonstrations of God's supernatural that I've ever seen in my life. Here, Ronnie, what is this? Operator's License, California. Number W. One, oh, three, eight, three, one, six. Is that right, dear brother? That's right. That was your wife that was just up here. I think. Praise the Lord. What does that say, Ronnie? Doris and Clarence Valentine produces present three cornered pants. Well, brother, did you come here to advertise? And I'd have him to the church services because, well, he'd bring a, a big crowd. Right. But the second time he was coming, and it was in that month, <clears throat> it was about two weeks before he was going to come, I had another dream. And in the dream, Jesus, because I was having a little bit of trouble, you know, I would tell everybody, I, I'm thinking, man, you know, how does he do this? I've never seen a miracle right. like this. Yeah. So there's a little skepticism, you know, going on. And yeah, I didn't absolutely. even tell my wife. Sure. I didn't tell nobody, but, in, but Jesus knows. <laughs> and so I had the dream, and Jesus said, Mel, I want to show you how Ronald Coyne sees. Right. He sees out of his spirit. And he told me how to see in the spirit world. Basically, to make it real, this might cheapen it. I hate to say it that way because there's so much to it. But he says, use your imagination. Just imagine that you have the mind of Christ. Mm. And since then, I've studied, and there's, like 264 verses in the Bible that uses the word imagination in the original language, like Mark 9, 23, one of the most powerful verses. Sure. All things are possible to them that believe. Well, in the Greek, it says all things are possible to those that imagine that God's word is truth. Right. Sorry, so you, how did you, obviously you came to believe that Ronnie Coyne was really seen. Oh, yeah. Ronnie Coyne could, had no eye, is that correct? No, no eyeball. No eye, and this, and he would... He had a plastic, he would actually had a plastic guy, then he would take it out. And they would, he would go to elaborate lengths of covering up his good eye with duct tape. And well, they, he would, he would call people out of the congregation. So yeah. you, you, you badminton my head up. He had 50 foot of gauze right. and a big patch. So put it on there how you like. Yeah. And then he would get their 
driver's license and would be able to read it. Or anything. Anything they wanted to, a business card. Anything. And he would be able to read it. Now, there right. is no way, even today, when you look at some of these videos, you can go, well, there's no way the guy can see. Mm -hmm. And yet there he is on, on videotape reading the information. Right. Uh, it really is a tremendous miracle that God did with Ronnie Coyne. Absolutely. So that he was able to do that. And, he, and we had a forward. miracle just recently, probably maybe within about a year, mm -hmm. of kind of the same thing. That, you know, I've learned to just use my imagination to see in the spirit world. And now I look for really demonic spirits because they're the root of problems. And so there was a lady in our miracle service at our church where we're at now. And I don't know her name. I don't know where she came from. And after the service, I looked for her and she was gone. So I don't. But I, I seen in the spirit world that there was something wrong with the, the right hand. Or I think, yeah, the right hand side, I think it was, of her head. And she, and she says, yes, that's true. She says, I was kicked in the head mm. um, by a horse and knocked my eyeball out. And I, and I said, well, you've got an eye. She said, no, that's a plastic eye. And so we did the same thing. I prayed for her and uh, had her to cover up the other eye and she had perfect vision. And so I don't know if God gave her a new eyeball or did one of Ronald Coyne's yeah. miracles. Yeah. But nevertheless, we have it on video that you can see her very well covering up her eye and you can see that she sees perfect. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. And he's no respecter of persons. Absolutely. No respecter of persons. And I love that, you know, there's the great thing about signs and wonders. There are signs that make you wonder. Yeah. <laughs> so right. they're really for the unbeliever. But, I mean, it obviously encourages us as believers uh, as well to see what God does when he does something like that. Right. And I love what you're saying here <clears throat> Mel, because you're really telling people it doesn't matter who you are. Right. It doesn't matter who you are. You believe in God. Right. Tap into that spirit part of your of who you are and let God show you something. And it's really that's where your faith really comes in, right. isn't it? Absolutely. Gene, if I've got if I tell this little story that, Please do, that, go that ahead. it's it's been a one of it's it's another major, major foundations of what God has given me. And you know, I'm convinced we're living in the day and time to where that we need to take the world. There's so much corruption in the world Amen. that I, we need to take yeah. the world into uh, an arena that they can't compete with. And that arena is science and wonders. And so, but the, the foundation of all of this, of miracles in the last days, science and wonders, it's easy for anybody to flow in it, but you need to know, you need to be born again. Right. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. You need to know the word of God and you need to know of the power of who God is. He's love. Mm. And this happened, this was, um, I think it's September the 27th. If that was a Tuesday, I'd be right. In, in 1983, there was a family in our church and they had, uh, their daughter was in the children's hospital. And uh, so they asked me if I'd go down there to see her. And so I did. And when I went down there, she was there. And then there was an, another bed over here. And it was a little boy there. And he's about five, six months old, something like that. And he had so many wires hooked in all his body. He was laying there nude. He had wires and he was unconscious and his, his skin looked like a corpse. And the nurse happened to be there. And I says, what's wrong with him? And she said, I forgot the disease. I think she, it was meningitis. I can't remember. It's been a long time. And she said, he'll die any moment. Mm. He's, he's, there's no hope for him. And so I asked her, I said, what's his name? And she said, Philip. And I said, do you think the family would mind if I'd pray for him? And she says, sure, I know they'd be happy to. So I'll never, and it, it just, I've told this story many times and it's hard for me to, I mean, it, it was so touching. And so I laid my hands on him and I began to just tremble and cry. I, it was hard for me to even speak words and tears are just flowing down my face. And I'm thinking, dear God, if anybody, I mean, a little innocent baby, right, right. They, don't, they don't deserve this torture. They don't deserve to die. And so I'm, I'm crying and, and trying to pray. And I had a vision of Jesus and he was standing right to my left hand side, had his robes on and everything. And he was shaking more than me and had his hands over his face. And he says, Mel, if you think that you hurt, he says, I hurt more. I hurt supernaturally. He said, but I can't do anything unless I've got somebody that will learn to be touched 
with the feelings of others' torments, infirmities, and their problems. And then he left. And so I came back about a week later to see the little girl and wanted to see Philip. And I come into the room and little Philip's bed was already just so clean, looked like nobody had been there for quite a while. And then the nurse happened to come in, the same nurse, and I says, where's little Philip? And she says, I want to show you something. She took me down the hallway. <laughs> she opened the door. Mm. And there's a bunch of little children in there. And little Philip, now when I seen him last, even his fingers were rotting off. They were just pieces of scab in his toes. His body was swollen almost double the size. And he's sitting in a high chair, eating, looking normal, and his little fingers were growing back. They were pink. Wow. And it let me know that God is love. Yeah. That, you know, you see, so many times I used to read the Bible and I thought Jesus was trying to prove he's a great evangelist, trying to prove he's the son of God. But every time I read it, I see now he was moved with compassion and healed the sick. The most sensitive part of God touched him. And that's how he raised the dead. That's how he did miracles. And that's what God is looking for today. How can people get in touch with you and get some of your books and materials? How can they find that? Well, if they want to go to melbond.com, that's our website. Melbond.com. And, and then you, yeah, you can look at our books and stuff. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna stay with Mel's gonna stay over for next week's program. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what God did and miracles and signs and wonders. But let me just say this to you watching. Mel is just like you and me. You can step into it. Many of us were waiting on God to do something, and he's waiting on you to say, I'm ready. Amen. So just step up, open your heart and say, God, I'm ready. Show me what to do. And then step out in faith. You're watching this network. Uh, the Victory Channel, you're, you're learning about faith every day. You can't watch anything on here without getting a, some sort of faith into the, into the program. So thank you for watching today. Go see who Mel Bond is at melbond.com and I encourage you to get some of his programs and get some of his books. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv. Or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385. Or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day's Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day's Signs and Wonders around the world.